G'day there guys, that one kid that you're nice to in class because you feel bad for him. Back at it again with another episode of r slash am I the a-hole. Now if you love this content like I love you, I want you to sit back, relax, chuck a prawn on the barbie, and get ready for some bloody good content. Posted by user kevthrow123, titled, Am I the a-hole for calling all men Kevin? I'm the only woman in my workplace of about 50 people. Mostly, this is okay, except for the sales team. They're mostly younger men who will turn anything into one of two things, a PP measuring contest or a very obnoxious joke. They have jumped on the Karen meme with both feet, both hands and a duck. The only issue is that they don't just use the name Karen to talk about someone who is behaving in that snobbish, I wanna talk to your manager kind of way. They use it for all women. Woman standing in line? <laughs> Karen. Hairdresser full of women? Crowd of Karens. Older woman getting on the bus? Old Karen. Couple of female kids? Looked about eight or nine years old? In their brownie uniform doing litter picking up with a group? <laughs> Little Karens. Resultantly, all women equal Karen, and Karen equals deserving of ridicule and mockery, and thus we have ended up at all women equals deserving of ridicule and mockery. And I ignored it at first, figuring that it wouldn't last and they'd move on to something new as they normally do. But it's been months and they're still doing it. An attempt at a light-hearted conversation I tried with one of them, pointing out that maybe it was problematic, got me, unsurprisingly, called a Karen. So, I started calling all men Kevin when I am in earshot of one of them, including them. And when I'm referring to them, I really go all out. Like, make it a really loud nasal whine and draw the word out. Especially if they're ticked off about losing a sale. Aw, is Kevin having a bad day? This, apparently, is a lot funnier than their Karen line. So, other people have picked it up and run with it. So now sales are ticked and telling me I'm the a-hole. I don't think I am, and am planning on letting it run for maybe a week or so after they drop the Karen thing. Then I'll drop it. Am I the a-hole? By the way, management are as useful as an underwater hairdryer, so have done sweet frick all throughout all of this. Job hunting is underway, but nothing so far. Edit, for info, we don't have HR. Or rather we do, but it's a third party we've contracted out to, and on such a cheapskate rate, pretty much all they do is handle payroll. We are an IT service provider, so we don't have customers or clients in the office most of the time. And while this sort of back and forth is tolerated as banter, anything that even hinted at a lawsuit would get me blacklisted from the industry. I am nowhere near retirement age, I can't afford that. And yeah, I will admit that I am not a big fan of the sales team. While this is the longest running crap they've pulled, it is definitely nowhere near the most obnoxious. No, I would not say that you're the a-hole in this situation. You're just firing back with your own meme, and it's turned into a full-out meme war with casualties on all sides. You've risen from the ashes as the victor in this one, and the Kevins are not happy. So they're retaliating with salty tears, and you're firing back with, with a big stone-hard wall and being like, I ain't taking this. So good on you, you're not the a-hole, they are. Not the a-hole. Don't dish it out if you can't take it, Kevins. Won't lie, I'm stealing OP's idea for all the Kevins out there. My name is Kevin, I love and encourage this. Aw, oh, poor you. Did you ever hear about the research when teachers graded essays and the grade was affected by the name? I heard the jokes about the name, it's not a name, it's a diagnosis, etc. I personally have never felt any discrimination, but I'm really interested in that research. I read a lot from a young age, which helped me in writing essays, so I almost always got good grades. I only remember being graded badly from my female classmates based on the essay subject once. Apparently it's actually a thing, I never knew about this. It wasn't necessarily bad grades, but if Harry wrote the essay, he got a 9 out of 10, but a Kevin would get an 8 out of 10. So consistently lower. I have to dig into my books to find the research, but I was just so shocked because I had this bias that people discriminate towards foreign names, and Kevin is just as West European and American as it can get. Here's a link to the paper, you can probably just write that down if you want to read it. They go into a summary about it, but it's what you'd expect. 
This is hilarious and deserved, not the a-hole. That's hilarious. I love it. However, once you made your point, you may want to turn it down before little Kevin goes crying to Karen about the mean Karen. Not the a-hole, but that won't stop the repercussions when HR does eventually get involved. If HR gets involved, what should they do to protect the company? There's disruption centered around one employee. Is it easier to deal with the employee or a large group? Sales is who brings in the money. Is it better for the company's bottom line to disrupt sales or whatever individual position you may have? Yes, I'm cynical about HR doing the right thing when they can damn well do the easy thing. Especially a third-party cut rate HR. Posted by user The Lackadaisical, titled Am I the a-hole for rubbing my belly? I am 28, female, six months pregnant, and am the first in my family to be pregnant. My family has reacted weirdly towards my pregnancy so far, but this is a whole new level. I'm wondering if I'm the a-hole or not. Being this far along, I am constantly feeling the baby moving inside me. She presses on my bladder and makes a ruckus in there. I found that gently rubbing my belly up and down, over my clothes, calms her and keeps her from jabbing my insides with her feet. Due to COVID, I haven't been able to see my parents until last weekend. So far, it's just been me and my fiancé celebrating the pregnancy, so I was excited to show them pictures of my ultrasound and catch up. My sisters, 30 female and 28 female, came over to visit while I was at my parents' house. We were sitting around and chatting when I felt the baby start to act up, so I absent-mindedly began to rub my belly. My sisters both gave me a look like I was doing something disgusting. They asked me why I was rubbing my belly and told me to stop after I explained. They said it made them uncomfortable. I obliged and stopped, thinking they were just being weird. An hour later, I was grilling with my fiancé and was rubbing my belly again. My older sister saw and snapped at me. She told me to stop. It was weird, and I looked like Buddha rubbing his gut. It was offensive, but I stopped to keep the peace. I just wanted to have a good time. Later, we went out for ice cream. Before I got in the car, my twin sister, who is also pregnant but not showing yet, stopped me and made me promise not to rub my belly in the car. She said loudly, to make my older sister laugh, I guess, no belly rubbing Buddhas in my car. I said, okay, I just wanted ice cream. While standing in line for the ice cream, I began absent-mindedly rubbing my belly again. My sister saw, snapped, and shouted, the lackadaisical, stop, that's so weird. Everyone at the ice cream joint turned around and stared at me. It was so embarrassing. Before leaving for home, I asked my mum what my sister's problems were with me. My mum said it was the belly rubbing and it was weird. My fiancé had my back and explained that it calms the movements and it's completely normal for me to do that. My mum said I was being overreactive and to imagine how hard it must have been for her when she was pregnant with twins. This still didn't answer my question, but my mum told me to be normal around my sisters and to stop being so sensitive. I feel weird because I thought I wasn't doing anything wrong. So Reddit, am I the big bellied a-hole? No, you are not the big bellied a-hole. You're the big bellied saint and we should all praise you for your child calming abilities. I'm sure a lot of people would love it for, to be that easy, I guess, in pregnancy. I'm sure there's some karate artists in the womb that don't give up whenever they're kicking and they're like, yo, your hands ain't gonna stop me. Bam, liver, bam. Your sisters really need to understand where you're coming from. It just seems like they're ignorant and they're unwilling to accept your point of view on this and be like, oh, she's rubbing her belly because she doesn't like being kicked from the inside. God, I don't like looking at that. That's disgusting. I ask you, comment section, how often would you see a pregnant woman in public rubbing her belly and you think, ugh, what, what's wrong with her, you freak? No, that's not a normal mindset to have. That's stupid. These siblings are stupid. The mom is stupid for enabling it. OP, you keep on rubbing on. Edit. I'm humbled by the power of Reddit. Thank you all so much for your reassurance and advice. I realize now that my actions were normal, but my family has some issues they need to work through on their own. I'm not going to waste my time trying to figure out their problems. I'm going to keep on rubbing my belly and enjoying myself. Maybe I'll update later after the baby arrives. 
Thank you all again. Love, Big Buddha Belly. Not the a-hole. Um, I'm really confused. What you did was normal. That's what I thought too. I have no idea what their problem is. Especially since my twin sister is pregnant too. It's so weird. It's perfectly normal. It's part of the bonding process and a way for you to protect her. It also relaxes you and baby and helps alleviate discomfort from scratching and carrying an actual human being inside you. Your family are wrong in so many ways. Rub that beautiful belly, mama. Rub it whenever and wherever you are and tell anyone who has a problem with it to back the hell off. Also, the skin is stretching and it itches. I mean, how can they even walk down the street or do grocery shopping if they're sensitive to such things? What if they hear a fork scratching a plate? What if they saw a dog eating another dog's poop? There will be that old guy showing his furry beer belly. Whatever. There will be this guy with a piece of boiled egg in his beard, loudly chewing his sandwich on the morning bus. A woman with disgusting village manicure, sitting next to them in McDuck. But their sister rubbing her baby belly is an issue. Right. Not the a-hole. Are your sisters usually temper tantrum throwing radars? Because they sound insane. Who cares if you rub your belly constantly or scratch your elbow? How is it any of their business? If they have a problem, they can stop watching. They are definitely characters. They have been so weird since I got pregnant. What makes it even stranger is that my twin is pregnant too. Is it an attention thing? Not wanting to share the limelight? It's so strange and I'm kind of stumped why your mother is going off the deep end with them. It's amusing that your sister made a scene in a store like a toddler because she was embarrassed by you. Did she forget her manners? Regress to childhood perhaps? Were I you, I would tell them next time, I will be rubbing my belly. I don't care what you think because it's not any of your business. This is a you problem, figure out how to deal with it. Both of my sisters, in my opinion, are weirdly attached to their childhoods and my mum. Whenever we're together, we only talk about childhood memories. Any other topics are disregarded. My overanalyzing self says that they're weirded out by me growing up and changing the norm of the family. I don't know though. When you're rubbing your belly, are you lifting up your shirt and getting up all in there? Are you moaning? Is your belly rubbing more akin to a vigorous cleaning motion? If not, consider starting. Establish dominance, okay? And that goes for you too, my thick boys in the chat. You too. Posted by user Looping Knots, titled, Am I the a-hole for not including my recently divorced ex-wife on a family trip? 10 months ago, my wife of 15 years explained to me she had interest in a co-worker, so I left it up to her to decide whether to open up our marriage. I figured it was just an exploratory phase. You know, like something she would have a change of heart about. After five months of being miserable with her going off with him nearly every weekend, I expressed to her I wanted to look for someone else. She replied that it would only push her to the other man. Nonetheless, I started seeing someone, and after the first day of me seeing someone else, my wife wanted a divorce. Ooh, oh my god, sis, damn. We have officially been divorced for a week. We have three kids together. We are also living together for the time being while she and her boyfriend are closing on a house together. Recently, our family's friend's wife contacted me and invited me and the kids to join her family on a trip. I planned on taking my girlfriend along with us. I explained to the family friend that if my family were to go on the kid trip, my kid's mother would not be going. They acknowledged and figured that was going to happen. Realistically, there is no room for two extra people. Personally, I have no interest in going on a trip with her and the man she left me for. She said she was hurt that my girlfriend is going in her place and that she was ousted so soon. No, you deserve that. She suggested that it could just be me, her, and the kids as per usual before our divorce. While our papers were signed a week ago, I am ready to settle into my new normal. Am I the a-hole for not including her? What crevice of Batman's cave did this weird mentality crawl out from? Dear Lord. Yeah, I want you to go alone without your girlfriend on this family trip while I take my new boyfriend who I had for five months and broke up with you instantly when you found someone else because I was too, you know, uh, sensitive 
to deal with my emotions like a proper human being and end it five months ago? So yeah, how about we just you, me, and the kid, and I'll sneak him later into the trip, and at that point, you'll be trapped with us anyway, so it's not like you can do anything about it. You're not the a-hole for not including her. Take the girlfriend along. You have the power in this one, OP. Love that. Love you. Continue being awesome. Edit. My oldest is 14 and has known about basically everything from the beginning. My younger two are 9 and 10. Both had suspicion about their mother's relationship with the boyfriend before finding out the gory details. Mine was a tidy secret until that point. Once the younger two learned the truth, they made the decision as to when they met my girlfriend. This has been two months today. The conflict for me falls to the other family having been our friends for 14 years. Also, the desire for things to remain healthy as possible between my ex and myself for the sake of the kids. My ex hopes to still do things like this together as family, and in the future, maybe we can, but right now I don't think I could stomach it. I explained this to my ex, and she seemed to be heartbroken at the notion. She is crying, and I just feel irritated. Kind of makes me feel like an a-hole. This situation is centered around myself and my ex. The kids are actually doing pretty well. Edit 2. I spent five months doing everything I could think of to save us. She spent five months leaving me at home with the kids. Lie after lie, and zero craps given about my feelings. The exact moment I said F it was when she didn't want me to attend her office Christmas party as I have every year for over a decade. Her reasoning was she didn't want her co-workers to think she was a tramp. Sounds like to me she was pushing a narrative that I was no longer in the picture. That was the moment I realized where I stood and that being faithful to her was a waste. My girlfriend walked into my life three days later. The hypocrisy and insanity that followed were truly unbelievable. After her initial immediate demands for divorce, she decided that we should start working on our marriage. Step one was ditch my girlfriend. Mind you, I had known her for a week and had no real ties to her. Nothing to say about how she would end her five-month relationship with a man she works 40 hours a week with, and that is centric to her friend group. I may or may not be the a-hole for excluding her from this trip, but I'm not asking about the demise of the marriage. Just gets messier the more you read into it, doesn't it? Dear lord, she is hot garbage. Not the a-hole. She wasn't technically invited if I'm reading this right. Also, big yikes at it being okay for her to indulge in your new open marriage, but not you? She can't see her hypocrisy and double standard. She always justifies it by saying she and her boyfriend check all of each other's boxes. Great for her then, but she no longer checks all of your boxes. Most importantly, the trips away box. She cannot have her cake and eat it too. That trips away box got me, damn it. <laughs> Not the a-hole. She should have thought of that before deciding to pursue another man. She is not being ousted because she's literally looking to move into a house with her boyfriend. She has a whole new life and seems to be just fine when you aren't going on a vacation. Exactly. He did not oust her. She left him. She wants to have her cake needed to- Damn it, stop saying that. <laughs> he can't seem to oust her fast enough. Like, she keeps leaving him without actually, you know, leaving? Found a new dude, didn't leave. Found a new house, didn't leave. Hell, she found out about the trip, now she wants back in. I mean, for God's sake, woman. Martyr Complex. I'm fudging someone else, but if you do it, I'm gonna leave and it'll be your fault. I've left you, but woe is me. You're not taking me on vacation with you? These comments got long, but this one just came up and it's actually really good. Not the a-hole. Your family and you were invited. She's the ex, so doesn't count as a real family member anymore, and is not amused that she is now excluded. Girl, this is your price for playing a stupid game. She can have an open marriage, but when you want the same, that's a reason for divorce? <laughs> what the fuck? By the way, ex and boyfriend are living in your house, so before you leave for this trip, collect all important documents, bank stuff, expensive jewelry, and put it in a newly rented safe deposit box, and take photos of how your house looked. Until now, you were very accommodating to her. 
But I guess, as soon as you all leave and she is alone with the boyfriend, reality will hit home, and nobody knows what she will do then. This post really should be higher up. The OP needs to protect himself, given how entitled her ex has already been. And yeah, I wanted to include that one because that's a very good point. We don't know what this woman's going to do. Better safe than sorry, especially given her past actions. And that's just a heads up for any of you guys if you ever find yourself in a situation like this. Posted by user Get Off My Beach, titled, Am I the a-hole, or I guess a we, for making a family that is trespassing on my property uncomfortable? 26 male. My boyfriend and I live in a lake house. I have two brothers, and our father has been in the picture since I was 15. And my boyfriend's father left him and his mom when he was really young. My brothers are 24 and 21. The 24-year-old has a girlfriend who I think is 23. My brothers and the girlfriend came to spend the weekend with us. We have lakefront property and a little probate beach area. We have signs up that states it is private property to deter trespassers and cameras that monitor the beach. This afternoon, we had been taking a break after going on jet ski rides. My youngest brother was helping me cook lunch, and my other brother and his girlfriend had decided to go down to the beach. They came back up and told me that there were people on our beach. They'd asked them to leave, but they didn't. My boyfriend went down to investigate, and apparently there was a whole boatload containing five adults and four kids. He again asked them to leave, and told them that it was private property. They refused, so he called the police and ate lunch as we waited for the police to come. Over an hour has gone by, and the police haven't showed up. He had been planning to go down to the beach after lunch, so we decided to go down and try and annoy the family into leaving. We played music with explicit lyrics, nothing too bad but still, brought down alcoholic drinks, and played drinking games. We purposely, and out of character, acted rowdy, not putting a filter on what we said. My boyfriend and I, who were not ones for PDA, kept holding hands, making out and stuff because there was a good chance this group of people was homophobic, we live in the South. Is this just a coked up version of the Jerry show? They're like, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. But instead of them being the crowd, it's like the whole group of people on stage, like tackling each other, making out. The cameras are getting in their face. Security guards are being pushed back. And they're like, whoa, Jerry, yeah, woo. You're not the father. You're not the father, woo. Sorry about that. After a while, the group got fed up and left. Before the group left, one of the women yelled at us, Shame on you people for ruining what was supposed to be a nice Father's Day for my husband and brother. We just wanted a good day on the lake and didn't need to witness frat boys gone wild. <laughs> they named me a sex tape. I shrugged and said, I mean, this is my property. My family and I can do whatever in the hell we want on it. Next time, do as you're told and stay the frick away. The adults in the group looked disgusted. One of the men looked like he was about to yell at us for what we said, but instead they just drove off. The police came much later, and obviously weren't any help. As we discussed what happened, my brother's girlfriend mentioned that what we did was immature and kind of rude, and we could have handled it better. Were we the a-holes? For the pure comedic value alone that this created for me as a Jerry Springer stage fight, absolutely you are not the a-holes. That's hilarious. I applaud you for the dramatics, for putting on such a beautiful display. Thank you, OP. You guys are saints in the modern world, and they deserved that for intruding on you guys. I'm sure the police could have done it much more effectively, but you guys did it in a time-efficient manner and got rid of them so quick that the police weren't even needed. So you're not the a-hole, simply for the efficiency that you solved this problem. I applaud you, good sir. Not the a-hole. They're the ones trespassing. Honestly, they're lucky that you're not the type that would come down brandishing guns and demanding that they get off your property. Clearly, they weren't going to leave, and honestly, what you did was likely one of the least dramatic ways to resolve this. If the police came and the people refused, they could have ended up spending the day in jail or paying fines for breaking the law. Not the a-hole. The entitlement on some people is mind-boggling to me. If this happened by accident to me and I was told I was trespassing, I wouldn't be able to apologize enough while packing my things and leaving as quickly as I can. This right here. 
apologize for the misunderstanding and get the hell out. I mean, if you can solve a problem by making out, drinking beer, and playing music, you resolved the situation as diplomatically as possible. And for the D&D fans, we found the bard. Definitely not the a-hole. It's your property, and they were trespassing. I guess it could have been handled better, but I don't think that makes you guys the a-holes. Just curious. How would you have handled it? I think you guys handled it perfectly. Bonus that you all let loose and had a lot of fun. You should have said, like we said, this is private property and we skinny dip as well. And if one of you has no shame, go full Monty. <laughs> Someone reckons don't do this, easy way to end up on a list, but it's private property and I disagree. Oh my god! Lol, you're not the king just because you own land. A crime is a crime. That's why you gotta dig deep holes. Oh no. Yeah, I think that's where I leave this one today. This has been more of a joke than an episode, it feels like. Hope you guys enjoyed this content today. Tell me what you thought about it. I hope you have a good night, day, sleep, whatever you're up to. Say good day to Outro Marky for me. Alright guys, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this one today. Tell me what you thought of it down in the comments below. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel, I would love you to subscribe because I love your face and I love seeing you here every single day that you are here in this video. I don't know what else to say today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. I do have a second channel that's called Marky2. Link should be up on the screen somewhere here if you don't have Adblock installed. Uh, if you don't know where to find the channel, you can go to my main page. Just click on the Marky face and it should be on the right somewhere there or on channels if you're on phone. Hope you guys have a good one. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.